Hi everyone, welcome back for another whiskey review. Today looking at this um, <laughs> rather funny name, blended malt whiskey called Sheep Dip. Now, um, I've been in the liquor industry for many, many years, 16 years plus now. And um, in the very early days, um, long before, I guess, my knowledge or deep passion for whiskey started, I remember this particular bottle and another one, I think, which comes from the same company called Big's Nose. And um, everyone was buying a bottle almost more for a laugh than care for what was in the bottle. People were looking for a sheep's dip, <laughs> a sheep dip, or pig's nose, which is, I guess it makes you laugh. But um, this is a blended malt whiskey, so they've blended some single malts together, rumored to be as young as 80 years old and up to 21 years old, and predominantly first fill casks, obviously. They're not saying if they're bourbon cask or sherry cask or any of that. So this is what, what you would refer to a blended malt, you know, because it's all single malt. There's no grain whiskey that's gone into the blend. And now it has a bit of a story, the sheep. That the story is um, there was a time many years ago when farmers distilled their own homemade whiskey. And in order to avoid paying taxes to the tax man, they'd hide in barrels marked sheep dip. So they'll keep their whiskies in barrel marked as sheep dip. So the tax man's probably thinking, or the sheep's <laughs> dip. I don't need to be, um, yeah, I don't need to be putting my hand's nose <laughs> into the barrel. So I guess it's, um, it's something interesting. And they are putting up to 16 single malts together, which I guess makes it one of the more interesting Malted blends, you know, there's whiskeys coming from many different ways, and um, yeah, I'm quite intrigued. And obviously, I've had this bottle for a very long time, and it's traveled south all the way down to here to this point where I will do a little review of it. Well, let's find out what's it like on the nose first. So, the whiskey itself is bottled at 40% ABV, which is um. Well, it's the bare minimum they're allowed to do in Scotland. But uh, bottled at 40% and there's very rich sweetness traveling all the way from the glass to here. So 40% ABV um, and the color is on the very golden side. Not, I'm not 100% sure um, if they add any color. It doesn't say they don't add color, but I would guess if they wanted to or they were adding color, I would have made it a lot darker so let's just assume it's natural color so it's very golden which alludes to maybe more of the ex bourbon cast been used but it's sweet i could as soon as i poured it into the glass you could sort of get the sweetness on the nose straight away oh honey loads and loads of honey this is good it confirms my doubts um or suspicion that um, there's a lot of the bourbon cask influence. Sweet honey. This actually reminds me a little bit of Jura 10, which I was drinking not so long ago. That um, intense honey character. This underlying tropical sweet character. Tropical fruit, I should say. Just a hint of vanilla. But otherwise, very pleasant on the nose for um, for a 40% whiskey because um, there's no oddity in there of spice or peat. And obviously, being 40% on 40% uh, ABV, there's no high alcohol sort of burn on the nose. Just very, very good. The other one, actually, I would liken it to is the Aberfill D12, which I was drinking the other day, which... Makes me a bit scared now because the Aberfeldy 12 on the nose is 10 out of 10. And on the palate, it's not quite 10 out of 10. Um, well, let's see what's this one like on the palate. Now, before I try it on to the palate, I, um, my young daughter, 10-year-old, is actually watching me record this review. She's quite intrigued what different smells I get from these whiskeys. And she asked me straight away, Papa, does, she, does it have honey? And I gave her a little smell. And she goes, yeah, I smell honey, which is spot on. It's just, if there could ever be a term called honey bomb, well, I found it. Mm. 
For a 40% whiskey, it's reasonably oily on the palate. There's just a hint of spice, just the slightest hint. Otherwise, very fruity, light. There's honey again on the palate. Almost um, like a cereal kind of character. But being at 40%, there was a rush of flavors. And it's all disappearing very, very quickly, as I suspected it would. But it's good, there's still loads of sweetness roaming around the palate. And the spices, if anything, all gone. Well, I'll give it another go. Mmm. Mmm. Very nice. You can't get over, I actually can't get over the fact how chewy and oily it is. Really, really pleasing. It's almost making me crackle, but not quite there. Very nice. I enjoyed it. It's good whiskey. Now, I generally forget what it retails for in New Zealand, but I am have a guess. I think it's around 75 to 80 Kiwi dollars, which I guess puts in price just above a Glenmorangi 10 or a Glenfiddich 12 or a Glenlivet 12 or at 70 bucks. So for a blended malt, it's just a little bit on the expensive side. But I would 100% recommend trying it once. It's not an average whiskey. There's a bit of depth in there. Um, there's a bit of joy in there. You just got to go looking for it. And on the nose, that honey is just so good. <laughs> Enjoying it. Loving it. Wow. And in terms of the finish, I would say short to medium at the best. Um, the sweetness and the honey is just it's disappearing very, very quickly. Well, that's all I've got to say. If you're liking the content, please like, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the very near future with another whiskey review. See you later. Bye-bye.